So I was hoping I was done today because it's a really busy day for me and I already had a video out and something fell on my lap that I feel like I need to address because it's something I talked about before a little bit after the Nintendo Switch launched and now a new report by Kotaku is showing that it's still happening. And of course, I'm talking about Switch Bendgate or, you know, if people <laughs> hate that terminology, Nintendo Switch is being bent. And it is reportedly something that is still happening to this day. Uh, originally, some people thought maybe this was just an issue with the launch consoles, but now we have people with consoles that have bought them in July, to someone who bought it in August, uh, all having issues with the Switch being bent. And it's not just happening in North America. Uh, we now have evidence that it's happening to people in Japan too. And if I had to guess, it's happening to people worldwide. These things are region free. So it's not like they make a batch and say, this batch is specifically for Japan. This batch is specifically for North America. They make a bunch, it goes to their warehouses uh, at the manufacturer and then Nintendo distributes them appropriately to whatever territories they want. They don't really pay, probably don't pay too much attention to which assembly lines making which switches. So... It's a very interesting thing because some people have said that this has happened out of the box. They open it up, the switch is already bent. Some have said that it's happened days later. Some are claiming that it's happened while it's docked. Some say they play handheld only and it's happened. And the common theory has been that uh, outside of the ones that came already bent, that's obviously an issue at manufacturing, there is this theory, widespread theory, that it's heat. That the Nintendo Switch is having a hard time dissipating the heat and it's causing uh, the internals to heat up to a point that the metal itself because there is a, a metal plating in here uh, is bending and when I addressed this before I was a little nonchalant about it uh, I said hey look you know we, we don't need to worry about switch bend gate just make sure your Nintendo switch isn't bent outside of the box because it sounded like a lot of cases at the time the switch was or could have been bent when you received it which means you need to send it into the Nintendo or return to the store and get a new one and that's all fine and full disclosure I've had a switch since day one I have had no bending issues although I do have another issue that cropped up and I'm going to get to that towards the end of the video but it's a very interesting situation, and now I feel like I need to take it a little more seriously because it's not going away. Uh, this is usually something that you see with launch consoles. Launch systems have issues. You know, you have the thumbsticks on the PlayStation 4 uh, with the tread wearing out and cracking. Uh, you had the, the Red Ring of Death, which ended up persisting all through the Xbox 360's lifespan, uh, at least until the Elite console came out, but it might have even been an issue on that. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, you know, the Wii Motes technically got better over time for the Wii because of Wii Motion Plus, uh, which was originally an add-on that included. So, like, there's always these little quirks about the consoles that uh, are a good reason not to buy a new piece of technology at launch. And the same is true <laughs> for with any piece of electronic device. You know, you want the new iPhone 8, whatever, coming out this year. Well, you might want to wait till after the launch batch to make sure if there's any issues with it that it gets worked out, such as Samsung Note 2's battery explosion issue. It would have been great uh, to know about that before you bought it, right? So let other people, you know, kind of be the beta testers for you on new products. But th th that's just a general advice. I know I'm, I'm a bad person to say this because I buy my stuff day one. Uh, and there's absolutely been some electronics I've had issues with. And there's absolutely been some electronics that I've literally never had a problem with on day one. But you take a risk buying things day one because while they are arduously tested, uh, arduously difficulty, I don't know what I was saying there. While they are tested a lot. It's a lot different than when you're making millions of them and you have millions of people testing the product and using it. Uh, the use case is really hard to replicate. So, that being said, Nintendo Switch Bengate is really a problem. Uh, it's not the biggest problem facing Switch out of all the possible things that have happened. Obviously, the Joy-Con connection issue was a pretty big issue. That has been fixed uh, and is not present in any of the new systems coming out, thankfully. So uh, that is an issue that has gone away, and that issue directly affects gameplay, so that's something Nintendo uh, took care of. It is notable that if your Switch is bent, and maybe you haven't looked at it in a while, so you want to check, 
send it into the Nintendo. At least Nintendo of America has stated that they will take care of it if you send it in. I know you might talk to some people on customer service and say, well, you know, it's bent or is it affecting gameplay? It doesn't matter if it's affecting gameplay or not. I mean, you could argue it is because it's curving the screen, which can affect viewing angles and create extra glare off of lights in your house. So, I mean, if, if you want to be mean about it, uh, you can be kind of snarky back to them. But it is your product. You have a right to be upset if it is bent. And everyone right now is still within the first year warranty period so it should be, have no issue sending it into nintendo of america they might send you a whole brand new unit they might swap out the internals it might swap out the casing whatever the, whatever the case may be they might you know give you a, a new heat sink or a new fan what's interesting is that the problem is still persisting and that's why i have to now take a step back from my initial stance saying hey look it's a small issue uh, it's an issue in manufacturing and we move on with our day because it hasn't gotten better. And if it hasn't gotten better, this starts to become a design flaw versus a manufacturing issue. And as I said, there's still some day ones, you know, switches that people are buying and right away it's already bent. So obviously there's still some issues at manufacturing, but this is happening enough now where we have to start to consider that there is an issue, a flaw with the switches. Now, thankfully, the switch is being bent isn't the end of the world. They're still usable. The screens are not broken or cracked. Uh, and it's highly doubtful it's going to bend so much that the system becomes unusable. But obviously, as it's bent, sliding it in front of the dock is going to create even more screen scratching issues. Uh, and it's a potential the problem could get worse over time. Uh, you know, my issue, and this is one that I'm actually surprised my Switch hasn't overheated, is while I was doing a recent video, and I'll put put the, the little thing up at the eye in the in the cards on YouTube here, uh, I was reviewing the RAV Power Power Banks, and for the very first time, I heard the fan making a weird noise. Not the normal noise that you always hear when it's ramping up. I mean, come on, I'm a, I'm a tech enthusiast. I built my own PC. I know what fans sound like when they're really ramping up those RPMs to keep things cool. And here I have my Switch running for 15 straight hours on a battery bank, which is amazing. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm in a game. I'm playing for 15 straight hours. And uh, <laughs> so about that, <laughs> and this is all in handheld mode, of course, because I'm testing a battery bank. And I'm like, the fan at one point started making that grinding sound. And we all know that grinding sound with fans, right? I actually have it happening in my car with one of my car fans. And I know there's multiple reasons. There could be a bent blade in there, uh, a ball bearing that that's kind of busted or something uh something's grinding in the fan gear itself and it's a relatively easy issue i mean right you open you could open up the switch replace the fan and there are fans you could find that will fit inside the switch case and kind of replace the fan that's in there not something that i suggest doing obviously with my issue i should just send it to nintendo let them replace the fan and call it a day especially before something flies out of it and potentially damages the switch but I, it's not, I, I don't know, uh, knowing me, I'm going <laughs> to wait till well after the warranty period, never get it fixed and end up destroying my switch in a year or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but when you, it, it, it's interesting because you wonder if it's going to affect fan speed, which could affect the heat of the system, which could cause my switch to, well, bend someday. And my switch has gotten really hot during that 15 hour period for the very first time ever holding the back of my switch was so hot to the touch I had to set it down and I usually only experience this in like high-end laptops and here it had happened with switch and it happened after I noticed the fan noise started started happening it started cracking and I'm like okay so my switch is not cooling down as easy now my switch still hasn't bent and this is why I'm still wondering about this whole issue with the bending now the plastic itself uh if it's done correctly, and this is what I argued in the first video, which I will also link uh, up in the YouTube card there, is an issue that shouldn't happen if plastic is made correctly. And that's what, I, what my whole argument about the plastification process was in the first place, is that the plastic itself, it's almost impossible for it to heat up enough to bend. Uh, at least it should be if it's manufactured correctly. Now, if there's a manufactured issue with the plastic, it would bend. But here, I don't think it's so much the plastic bending. Now, let me explain. As I'm showing all these pictures of bent switches, what you'll notice is that the back plate on the switch, while it has plastic in it, it also has a metal shield. And there's like a metallic feel to the, the actual 
thing. And obviously there's a there's a metal heat shield inside the whole switch unit itself. If you ever take it apart, you'd see that. And the problem is, is that while you're not going to heat that metal hot enough to melt it, everyone knows when you apply heat to metal, it becomes more pliable. Usually the same is true of plastic, but again, because of new plastic plastification processes, it's become very, very hard uh, to bend plastic uh, unless you're at, you know, at that correct heat threshold, which no, the switch does not get up to that heat threshold, not even mine when it was hot to the touch. Now, the metal, however, can become easier and more pliable to bend. So as it's heating up, if you, especially if you're in handheld mode, sometimes you're, you're getting intense on the games and you're putting some pressure on the system, and it could, over time, slowly cause a bend. Now, for the ones that ha are having issues with it bending inside the system, see, here's the thing. Metal doesn't curl up on itself when it gets hot, okay? So for it to bend, something has to be bent like physically shaping it and we do know that there are certain docks that are not perfect we've seen pictures of them i've seen i have a friend who has a switch who his his dock is not perfectly straight and i told him dude you probably should get a new dock or send that into the nintendo and have them send you a new dock and the reason is because the docks are not all perfectly manufactured and that is a manufacturing issue that i am highly surprised that that is still happening today where people uh have docks that are not perfectly straight so as you put your system in there and as that metal heats up and becomes more pliable it's actually molding to the shape of the plastic in the dock that's one possibility that's happening for people that are in dock mode that do not have docks that are perfectly straight the other possibility is obviously people holding it and using it and putting pressure on the switch as you're in handheld mode and it just slowly bending over time as the metal heats up and this is an issue that i don't know what nintendo can do because it's, it would take a complete redesign of how the Switch is made for this to happen. It is a problem that is going to persist until they release the next version of the Switch. So, is this going to kill the Switch? No. Is it such a widespread problem that we need to have like this huge worldwide panic? No, of course not. But it is something that is notable and something Switch owners, current or future, should be aware of could happen. Your panic level on it is up to you. Personally, if my Switch starts to bend, I'm going to send it in and take advantage of my warranty. Once I'm past my warranty period, if it bends again, I'm just going to leave it alone. Uh, you, I, I've had beat up systems in the past. I've had, you know parts literally broken off an old n64 i've had uh plastic chipped on game boys but all the systems still worked and just like that even if it's bent i'm still going to use it because it's still going to work i don't really see it affecting my gameplay issues um i also happen to have uh an accessory for playing outside of the dock itself so i don't even have to use the dock if i you know if for some reason my switch is so bent i don't want to put it in my dock but these are all issues that I already have solutions for. So for me personally, if, if my Switch ever does bend, it's not a big issue to me. But it can be a big issue to you. And unfortunately, I don't know and I don't think Nintendo can do anything about it. Uh, thankfully, the good news is that this is probably only affecting a small percentage of Switches. If this was this massive worldwide epidemic, we would be hearing about this every single day. The fact that it's only come up in two, two videos from me now and a few news articles uh, over the past you know, six months or so should let you know that it is not common. This issue is uncommon. Uh, it does not happen for most people in most situations, but it still does happen and it's an issue that has not been ironed out and probably won't be ironed out and will probably be sticking around with the Switch for its duration. Again, thankfully, it's not like a bricking issue. You know, I'd rather I'd rather not have uh, the Red Ring of Death come up <laughs> in comparison to the, the bent issue, but uh, it's still an issue. And I'm hoping a redesign with a new Nintendo Plus or uh, new Nintendo Switch or whatever, whatever they want to call it in a couple years pops out just like they do with the 3DS and then it, in that redesigned version you know they fix the cooling issues uh, maybe they had to make it a little fatter include a bigger fan maybe they needed a bigger heat sink I have no idea well whatever Nintendo figures uh, or, or thinks will fix the issue uh, is something I look forward to finding out Anyways, I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jance from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. If you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. And hey, if your Switch is bent, let us know down in the comments below. And even link us to pictures if you want. Uh, I will approve your comments. I know sometimes linked pictures 
uh, with URLs and stuff in them get flagged, I will try to approve them. Because um, I'm actually interested in how many people in our own Nintendo Prime community are dealing with this. Or if it's just me con concerned about it. Maybe I'm the only one in the community that owns a Switch. I don't know. Uh, but I'll catch you guys in the next one.